There are two kinds of people who make fun of Islam. Please understand. There are two kinds of people who make fun of Islam. There are people who eat, no matter what they know about Islam, they will still hate Islam and they will make fun of Islam. You can never impress them, you can never convince them. These are the children of Abu Lahab. You can never convince them. Even if the Prophet ﷺ is living next door, you cannot convince them. The second kind of people that make fun of Islam, know nothing about Islam. They have no idea about Islam. All they know is the crazy behavior of Muslims. That's all they know. And so they assume that the Muslims are crazy because Islam made them crazy. So they're actually not making fun of Islam, they are making fun of Muslims. Because Muslims do ridiculous things. This is the first point. The second thing is that there is a difference between the enemies of Islam today and the enemies of Islam at the time of Rasulullah wasallam. Please listen to this carefully. At the time of Rasulullah wasallam, the enemies of Islam were there because the Rasul wasallam was inviting people to be honest. He was challenging corruption. He stood for justice. He was telling people that the slave and the slave master are equal, they have to stand in one line. He was destroying the system of Quraysh and replacing it with the justice of Islam. They became his enemies because he was talking about the truth. And every time you meet the Prophet ﷺ, and every time you meet a Sahabi of the Prophet ﷺ, you will get the same exact message of truth. Not only in their speech, but also in their practice. And that, that some people hated it. And so they became enemies of Islam. Today, do the Muslims have enemies? Yes. But Muslims have enemies for political reasons, for economic reasons, for social reasons, for business reasons. But they don't have enemies to Islam because we are the champions of justice. And we stand tall for the oppressed. They don't know anything about that. We don't do that. And we have enemies, but for different reasons. You understand? So what people do sometimes is they compare the enemies of the Prophet ﷺ of that time to our enemies of this time. Two different things because they are enemies for two different reasons. You cannot to compare two things that happen for two different reasons. Now, how do we respond? The first thing is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says about him, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ We raised your mention every single day when the adhan is recited and somebody recites, أَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ If the sound goes in your ear, what do you say? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every single second of the day, somewhere in the world, there is adhan happening. And somebody is saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are elevating the mention of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 24-7. 24-7. Not by one person, billions, billions of people. That's just human effort. But on top of all of that, in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Allah and the angels are sending salawat upon the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I am trying to raise his status, but Allah Himself raises his status. And all the angels raise his status. So when one idiot of a human being, when one dog barks, it takes nothing away from the dignity of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is as stupid as thinking that a dog, somebody spitting at the sun. When you try to spit at the sun, it'll come on your own face. You cannot make fun of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is impossible. It is impossible. We have to learn to adopt the attitude of Rasulullah himself sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His name is Muhammad. But when they criticized him and they they made fun of him and they called him Mudammam. When Hind called him Mudammam, he said she's talking about someone else. 
He just said, I don't know who that is. She's talking about someone else. He did not say, how dare you call me with... No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Don't worry. Let it go. Let me tell you this. If a dog is barking at you, you're walking on the street, a dog came, ruff. What do you say? Oh yeah, ruff. When a dog is barking at you, what do you do? You leave it alone. You leave it alone. Let these dogs bark. Let them bark. Actually, when you answer them, then they get louder. And then more dogs show up. These people need attention. They need attention. That newspaper had few hundred, few thousand distribution. After the Muslims protested, after the Muslims did this idiotic thing, they did something the Rasul would never allow, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they killed these people. Did they honor the Prophet? Now that same cartoon that some few hundred people saw has been seen by millions, if not billions of people. These people think they helped the Prophet ﷺ. They spread the problem way more. They helped the advertising more than anybody could have done. More than anybody could have done. Actually, the, the, the people who made fun of the Rasul ﷺ did a crime. But the Muslims did far bigger crime. Far bigger, because they spread it all over the world. There are even people saying, hey, I don't know what this card is, let me see. Even the Muslims are looking at it. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Don't spread it. The best thing to do when a dog barks is what? Ignore it. This nonsense will continue, and wallahi, much worse than this has already been done. It's been done. And it's not new. It's been happening since the time of the Prophet ﷺ. So we need to understand, first of all, this does not affect anything. Then the next point. The next point is, am I offended? Absolutely. Absolutely I am offended. Are the Muslims supposed to be offended? Absolutely. I have a suggestion. I have a suggestion that Muslim organizations, Muslim governments, Muslim institutions, bring lawsuits, take these people to court for defamation. If the Jewish community in Europe can ban the conversation about the Holocaust, you cannot deny the Holocaust in Europe, you go to jail. They say they have freedom of speech until you talk about the Holocaust. In America, you have freedom of expression until you burn the American flag. There are some things they will not let you do. Every society has some things that are offensive to them. Muslims are no different. This is offensive to us. But I am arguing, we have to learn to speak their language. These people, they don't worship anything except money. All they worship is what? Money. When we protest, and we make a lot of noise, we give them publicity, and when they have more publicity, they make more money. But when we take them to court, and we sue them for millions and billions of dollars, they lose their money. We need to learn to learn to learn the language language of attack. We need to become more sophisticated in our attack. Protests will not do anything except help them. And you know what? This is not going to be the last one because they know they can get the reaction out of the Muslims every time, so they will play with us every time. We are falling into their game. We have to understand the game and play it smarter than them and not be reactionary. This is, this is what I think, Allah Ta'ala A'la. This is what I think. I'm not saying do nothing, but I'm saying react, but react intelligently, react collectively, react in a sophisticated way. This is what we have to learn to do. We have to mature our response, inshaAllah Ta'ala. We hope you will continue to enjoy our content. Don't forget to subscribe. And by pressing the bell next to the subscribe button, you will receive updates and notifications. Thank you.